Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we are wrapping up the Indiana Jones film series. Mm, the tetralogy. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's a quadrilogy, but that's not a real thing. Liar! Whoa. It's a tetralogy, I think, maybe, probably. <laughs> I admire your confidence. Thanks. You feeling confident enough to allow everybody to leave a like on this video? Yes. Great! <laughs> So, Mason. Yes. Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yes. Finally, we got here. The good one. Finally. <laughs> took, took. You're going to continue this joke no, for the whole video? I, I think I stopped at last video. I think you might have, yeah. Yeah. So, here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. We had a bunch of Indiana Jones before this, like leading up to it. Did we? So there were lots of books, there were a few mm. comics, there were a whole lot of pretty solid video games. Mm, there was some edutainment, as there, we know. Well, that's the thing, because Harrison Ford actually reprised his role as Indiana Jones in the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Did he? Yeah, he's got a beard because he was filming The Fugitive at the time. Oh, right. If I recall, there's definitely another actor who plays a very old Indiana Jones there's with an a, eye patch. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. There's like a little kid, and then there's Sean Patrick Flannery age, mm. and there might be some others in there as well. <laughs> An actor of Sean Patrick Flannery age? Mm, that's right. Did they get Sean Patrick? Flannery or do they just want somebody? He wasn't available. <laughs> Here's the thing about this one as well. Go on. It just feels late. I feel like mm, they missed a okay. trick making one in the mid-90s to make it feel okay. like the old ones. Let me ask you this about this movie particularly. Yeah. Having just rewatched it, presumably recently, mm -hmm. what do you think about it now? What did you think about it then when it came out? It came out and I thought it was okay. I think it dips wildly at a mm -hmm. point, which a we'll point. talk about. Mm -hmm. And then we I might have the exact same time code. <laughs> That's right. And then I spent a long time like really not liking it. Mm. And watching it again, I'm like, it's fine. Yeah, look, I remember intensely disliking it when it came out. Mm. I haven't seen it since. I didn't see it again at the cinemas. Why would I? Yeah. Didn't see it on the, any kind of home media. Didn't mm -hmm. watch it on VHS. Yep. Uh, so this is my first rewatch, and I think a lot of it is pretty good. I get it. See, you, know, you know what I, I think? I think he's maybe tricking some people. Yeah. The uh, movie has moved to the 1950s, mm -hmm. and everybody seems a little bit more colourful. It's less of a grubby universe, I think. Yeah. And I think people are like, this looks... This has an unreality to it. I don't think the unreality is a result of the era because I don't hate the concept of this. Oh no, there's two. There's two unrealities to this. <laughs> one is is that yeah. the, the moving the era to the fifties, and the other one is the incredibly shonky CGI. Sure, but we'll get to that. I'm sure later. Absolutely. But where do you where do you set a movie when Harrison Ford is in his sixties? That's true. You have to set it. Yep. In this era. Mm. I don't hate the idea of aliens and Kate Blanchett heading up a bunch of Russians. It's fine as a concept. In the young Indiana Jones Chronicles... Oh, here we go. He met Dracula. <laughs> yes. He can meet some aliens. And what, he learned about blood types or something? Did I, he... No, they killed him. <laughs> oh, good. Kill him. <laughs> All right. Well, you're right. So, you know, Indiana Jones is meant to be a pulp adventure hero. Mm. And in the era of the original movies... He would have been exploring ancient ruins and meeting supernatural creatures and or having supernatural experiences and so forth. Yeah. And in the 1950s, people started getting obsessed with little green men and UFOs and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. And if his character had continued in pulp novels or radio plays or whatever they were doing at the time or, or movie serials, he would have been searching for that sort of thing. It's like the character of Rick Dangerous, James. Oh, yeah. From the, the, the computer game series Rick Dangerous. The game's Rick Dangerous, James. That's exactly right. Never played this. Well, a Rick Dangerous, James, originally was uh, was uh, was an Indiana Jones-style hero, a rip-off, you might say. And then mm. in 1990, in Rick Dangerous 2, he became more of a Flash Gordon-style hero. Oh. And then this movie came out, a mere... 18 years later, coincidence? I think not. It sounds like a coincidence. Mm. But you're right. I don't, I'm, I'm not mad about the uh, turn to aliens. I am a little bit mad that the vernacular had to change. They're like, no, they're actually interdimensional beings. You know what it is? I've just thought it. You know what it is? Yeah. If we can jump to the end just briefly and get, then go back. There's too much explanation as to what was happening. Yeah, okay. Like John Hurt, who is a nice addition to this franchise, I yeah. think, is just like, it's definitely interdimensional beings. Is it? Give, give me a little bit of ambiguity there. Well, the reason you know? that happened is because Lucas for years was like, I want to do Aliens. And Spielberg was like, I don't want to do another Alien movie. I've mm. made a couple Alien movies already. It's not interesting yeah, right, to me. Uh -huh. So Lucas said, well, let's do interdimensional beings. And Spielberg literally went, fine, fine. Okay, sure. And that's how we got here. As long as we do not use the word Aliens and, and someone says, yes, that is what this is. Why not do Aliens, though? Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like you're right. There's too many levels of complexity. And nobody would say that in the 50s. No. Interdimensional beings, probably. But anyway, J uh, John Hurt, it was nice to see him. Yep. Ray Winston and Jim Broadbent are also in this and are great. But I think 
two people that were missing and we see them on little on uh, Indy's desk in little production stills that have been turned into <laughs> family photographs. We don't have Marcus Brody and we don't have Henry Jones Sr. Yeah, one passed away and Sean Connery was like, I'm very retired. Thanks, Alex G. Mm. And that's why he didn't want to yeah, reappear yeah. in this one. But I think it was... It's nice to have Karen Allen. Yeah. But... The fact that everybody else is new, there feels like a disconnect there. Yeah, you know I, what I, mean? I don't disagree with that. I, I didn't hate Shia LaBeouf in this. I don't like him. Initially, I did, because he shows up in the full Marlon Brando with the, yeah. with the weird, you know, the hat they had. I and, know. And the thing about that is... It's sad. It feels sad. Yeah. Because you know how they borrowed Indiana Jones's look? Yeah. They're like, well, let's take an iconic, mm. like a different iconic movie star look and just slap it on this fucking idiot. Yeah. The thing is, James, obviously they're like, okay, well... You want, you want him to be the most iconic version of that from that era, and that is Marlon Brando. But the thing about that look is no one, including Marlon Brando, can actually pull off that hat. <laughs> you see that movie? It's embarrassing, that hat. No one looks good in that hat. But then he loses the hat fairly quickly, yeah, and I'm like, point. okay. Yeah. yeah, leather jacket and a knife is fine. He looks like he, 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 looks like he is in a Marlon Brando cosplay. Yeah. But then I'm like, okay, I'm settling into this character. I don't, I don't, I don't mind this. I liked. Uh, his, I think I liked his back and forth between Indy and, and Mutt. I, I quite enjoyed it for the most part. I believed it. Yeah, I think it. I think probably like my real world dislike for Shia LaBeouf mm. is definitely creeping into this. Yeah, right. But I just I don't think in terms of additions, if you compare him to any of the previous companions, literally mm. any of them, yeah, uh-huh. he doesn't stack up. Right. Okay. And that like the fake kind of the faux toughness that he's doing, I don't, mm. I don't doesn't, I don't feel it. It's very much that concept of like this is the it guy. You all love this yeah. guy because at this point he'd done a few things. He'd done uh, Transformers, Transformers, the first one. He'd done Constantine, yeah, uh, other things that we would recognize. Holes, holes. Mm. I think they should have given it to like maybe Josh Hartnett. Yeah, perfect. That would have been yeah. great. But yeah, you're right. He'd, he'd done a, a few roles. He, he was a big box office draw, seemingly. Mm. And they were like, well, we can't miss out on this guy. We've got to get him in. <laughs> yeah. We've got to put him in that stupid hat. Absolutely. Here's the thing about Harrison Ford in this. Mm-hmm. He does kind of feel listless for some of okay. it. Just kind of like, all right, um, well, I've done a lot of this, but I think I can I can go along with whatever's happening mm-hmm. here. And I'll say this of The Force Awakens. Okay. Um, that's right. Oh, I'm here gonna, we go. Uh, that's right. I'm going to compliment say, the okay, Force Awakens. For SEO, can you say something about The Last Jedi as well? <laughs> sure. Okay, great. That Controversial. There's an energy that Harrison Ford has in The Force mm. Awakens, which I don't feel is here. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that being said, I think he looks good. Mm. Like, he looks strong. I remember him looking a lot older. Yeah, right. Then, mm. like, mm. seeing it now, I'm like, oh, he looks terrific. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's clearly... Like, he's kept up with it. There's a moment at the start where you just see him, like, climbing some boxes. And he's just <laughs> he's just moving really well. You'll believe a man can climb some boxes. But a guy that age moving like that, that's mm. unusual. There's a moment where he's just in a white T-shirt. Yeah. He looks fucking incredible. He looks incredible. Yeah. And he's facing off against, you know, some of the most intense actors from network television at the time. <laughs> the Janet from Scrubs. Yep, absolutely. Who I love. Uh, some other guys. The guy from the OC, Alan Dale. That's right. Australia's <laughs> own Alan Dale is in that room. Neighbours own Alan Dale. That's true. I also feel like there's an in-canon reason for why Indiana Jones is still like this. Roids. No, I'll oh. talk about But maybe I'll talk about it later. Here's the thing I do like about this. Mm-hmm. I think the opening action sequence, I know like the nobody likes the ferrets and whatever. I, I uh-huh. agree. I know they're not ferrets. It doesn't matter. Let's just all move past it. Move past the ferrets, folks. The bit where he's taking on all the Russians mm-hmm. and he's just tearing through them. And Mac is the only one in that warehouse that is just like, this is a fucking lunatic. Yeah, uh-huh. You need to back up from this guy. <laughs> he's right. got to kill all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the rage rising in him <laughs> and he's going to snap. He's going to do one of his signature big punches. <laughs> That's right. And you are all in a lot of trouble. He's going to punch three to four of you at a time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when, when, he comes out of the, when he comes out of the trunk of the car. Mm. You know what's interesting about that sequence and I never, I hadn't thought about it? Right at the start, there's the moment where the teens go past in their car Yeah. and you think something is going to happen. Like you think the teens are going to be Russian operatives or something, and they're gonna okay, they're, sure. They're gonna crash into the the the, the army vehicle, and and yeah. they're gonna attack whatever. They just leave. It's just What's a, their adventure going on. I think it's just a nod to like George Lucas's love of you know that oh, era. It was the American and, graffiti kids. Exactly. They were gonna do some American graffiti. Absolutely. I also believe that the U.S. government would just put an alien in a box and forget about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just, where is it? I don't know, somewhere it is. Yeah. Should we check in on it? That's nah, probably it's all probably right. probably fine. Who's going to go there? Put it next to the, the box that's got God in it. 
I love that. I think that's great. What if the alien and God have a conversation they want to get out of here? <laughs> well, we locked the boxes, so yeah. and we put some other boxes on top of those boxes, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. they're not getting out. Speaking of boxes, mm. the fridge moment. Yeah. Now, I know that this has become like a thing. It's the, you know, the nuke the fridge. It's the jumping the shark of mm-hmm. this particular franchise, oh, right? What that? that was an era for jumping the shark yeah. as well. This idea came from an early Back to the Future script where the original idea for time travel was a fridge and a nuclear explosion. Oh, I see. But, and the thing about this is, I just, I know it's unrealistic. Uh-huh. I just, I don't care. I didn't care this time I don't know, yeah. yeah. I, and I think, do you remember in like Temple of Doom, they drop out of a plane in a, in a boat? Mm-hmm. They do silly things all the time. And I love the reveal, like the silhouette of Indiana Jones with the nuclear explosion, mm. like kind of ushering in this new era. Oh my God. I love that. I and think it's great. And he said, this is ushering in a new era. <laughs> is it good? Well, it's been better, but this is definitely a new <laughs> era. Mm. Well, that can really do more than one old man with a whip. <laughs> I feel a little bit uh, past my user by date, honestly. You know what he should have done? Jumped in the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, absolutely. He should have taken a, a nuclear-powered journey with God and they could have had a chat. <laughs> but the thing about this movie is... Go on. As it goes on, the the modern kind of effects of the day and style kind of mm-hmm. takes over. There's that soft The Hobbit kind of glow. James, it's one hour and 20 minutes. It's, it's exactly <laughs> yes. when it happens. They end up in the jungle. Yeah. There's a chase. There's a big cutting machine, a yeah, big the, CGI mm. cutting machine. The thing about that scene is also it doesn't look bad all of the time. Mm. They really did have a stretch that they ran back and forth through. It was like the scene in The Matrix reloaded where it changes to cgi when it's, the it's neo fighting all the agent smiths and he's fighting about 20 agent smiths and they're all real stunt men and yep. then they're like okay bring in 50 more agent smiths and obviously there wasn't enough room on the basketball court hugo weaving doesn't have that many brothers <laughs> that's true they, they had to cut it he short. has cousins but you know <laughs> he's beefing with those cousins so he's got a lot of cousins man yeah um and so they just switch to all cgi and it just you can immediately the tell. The monkeys and the swinging. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. The, monkeys, the, the, the point at which Shia LaBeouf is, is doing the splits between two different yeah. jeeps while sword fighting and he keeps getting hit in the nuts with branches and he's still doing it. What is it? No, yeah. that's... I mean, you do that for real? Yeah. That's the best stunt of all time. Absolutely. You know? Jean-Claude Van Damme would do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. To advertise a, a mineral water or something. Or Mint Mobile or something. Mint Mobile. <laughs> but it, but it's not real and it doesn't look real. Yeah. It doesn't have any weight to it. Yeah. And they continue that with that for a lot of it. There's even the scene at the end where they're all sort of like sitting around in the ruins and they're like, boy, that was a big adventure we had. And you'd be, it'd be, you'd be like, yeah, it, it, it was, but it's undercut by the fact that they're, ne- they're nowhere. Yeah. They're in a void and there's some brickwork and the rest is green screen. Yeah. And you couldn't go to a real place for that? A place? Top of a convenience store? Boy, <laughs> sure had a lot of adventures here. Boy. I bought a t-shirt down there. Isn't this where they film Clerks? Yeah. Boy, what an adventure. That's right. The thing is as well, and this really surprised me, Spielberg didn't shoot this movie in digital. Mm-hmm. And this was in the era where they were doing that. Like the mm. previous two Star Wars movies had done it. And here's a quote from him that says, It looks like we shot it three years after Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. You'd never know there was 20 years between shooting. And that might be what the raw footage looks like with mm. a bit of tweaks, but that's... Uh, you can tell. Yeah. You can really tell. I know you mentioned Mac and you're like, I like him or whatever. I just Who's don't... Mac? Uh, Ray Winston. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's funny uh-huh. or interesting. Mm. And again, it's that layers upon layers of like, I double-crossed you, no, I'm a double mm. agent, I'm a yeah, triple right, agent. Uh-huh. It's just like, I don't know. I think they just... Because they were like part of the trope of Indiana Jones is somebody's going to betray him at some point, so they had to throw that guy in. Okay, I great. Think. But it, he's, again, just as a, as a general companion you meet along the way he's no Jonathan Rhys Davies as an example I think if maybe if they had kept them side by side wouldn't he have a, wouldn't he have a photo of Jonathan Rhys Davies on his desk he probably did somewhere <laughs> amongst it's got the, the boom mic. it's got the boom mic <laughs> yeah. in the frame it's just like whatever can take it from the making of we don't care I also feel like where this falls down is that it's really light on the horror elements of the previous yeah. movies. There's a moment where a bunch of Russians get torched by a jet engine, yeah. and it just feels like some guys just being engulfed in CGI flame and nothing. Mm. Like uh, the, the fire ants or the, the, the yeah. giant ant situation. Exactly. Much better, I feel, than the CGI rats from uh, the third movie, Mason. Oh, yes. Yeah. Remember when I said that and a lot of people yelled at me that they weren't CGI? Mm. I just want people to know that's a thing I believe. You didn't miss a joke okay, that true. I said. Not that. you, Mason. I'm <laughs> telling everybody. I miss tons of jokes. Yeah. And you know, it ends with Kate Blanchett. It's 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 a lot of power and I want all the power, but it's mm. too much power, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And Her head should have popped. Yeah. Just bam. Yeah. Just spread it all over the, the aliens and they would have been like, bleh. 
yuck. But again, like the and, and when we get to the end, when it all forms up and there's literally a little <laughs> grey man there. Yeah. G- give me more ambiguity. You know sure. what I mean? She sees something and we don't know what it is. I yeah. think that would have been better. Okay, fair enough. You know? But there is some good practical stuff in this. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, those guys who live in a wall. I want to know, like, how does that day start? Like, you pack your little lunch and you That's go right. and crawl into a wall? Yep. Is that how that's yeah, that yeah. how your day starts and ends? Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. You clock in like those... Um, those Warner Brothers cartoon dogs that, that hate each other or whatever, you know? <laughs> Chunk. <laughs> but what I do want to talk about before we get into the glasses, Mason, is something that I feel like is in your wheelhouse. Okay. He's wearing the same or very similar outfit to uh-huh. what he has previously. Again, yeah. we've talked about the hat, how it does mm-hmm. change movie to movie and whatever, and mm-hmm. they go back to previous models this sometimes. One, sometimes it's grey. Yeah, sometimes it's grey, Mason. Freaking hell. But okay. we got to circle back around to his glasses. Okay, now you're trying to determine... Yeah. What prescription Indiana Jones has, or whether in fact he has a prescription at all? Now, the, if I recall, the only time he's wearing glasses in this yep. is what is the, so the scene at the college mm-hmm. where he's teaching. Uh, he's wearing little round glasses, but for the most part, he's looking over the top of them. Yes. So that would suggest to me that the, those ones are reading glasses. Because when he looks out into the the, the, the student he's body, peeking over. he's peeking over them. And when uh, when his friend opens the door to speak to him, he's, he's looking over them. Yeah. And then when he goes to speak to Jim Broadbent, he takes them off entirely. So I think he's using them to look at the blackboard. Mm-hmm. And But when he uh, looks over the top of them, he can see the, 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 the students perfectly well. Okay. That would be my guess. I agree. Mm. I think from this investigation, mm. well, that we've I've, done. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, obviously I've got my input here, but you, you're the one who has to make the final decision here. Well, there's a little wrinkle on this that I want to talk about. Okay. <laughs> I do think that they're just reading glasses. Uh-huh. I think maybe sometimes he'll just wear them because he's just got them on. Mm. You know, but but here's the thing: it's interesting that his vision has not deteriorated, yeah. and his health has basically stayed the same. And we know that's because he's Hollywood rich and famous. That's true. And that's why in real life that he's still able to do the things yeah. that he is in this movie. <laughs> but if you look at the Last Crusade novelization, mm-hmm. I think there's a link between the Grail and him being this level of fitness. You think you think it has something to do with the, the fact that he, he chugged from the uh, the tumbler of uh, the tumbler eternal of youth. youth? Okay, the tumbler yeah. of youth. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing: if you go into the novelization, it goes into more detail about how it works. And apparently, what it is is you is have this to... an Alan Dean Foster joint. No, it's a. Oh, you really fucked me on this, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Robert McGregor. Okay, all right. Yeah. So what you basically have to do, what the knight had to do, was drink every day. Mm-hmm. And if you drink from it every day, you retain your youth. Okay. But the longer that you drink from it, and if you pause drinking, then your age catches up to you the longer you leave it. Oh, I see. So the knight apparently had a few crises of faith, uh-huh. and that's why he aged. Right. He basically took a couple of days off, and okay. then went, no, I love God, actually, and he kept <laughs> drinking. But then... Do you love God, or do you love your perfect skin, mate? Great question, mm. yeah. But what it does do, even mm. if you drink from it once, nice. any injuries or diseases that you have, it clears up and gives you an absolutely fresh bill of health. So this is, we can break Indiana Jones's life up from before... Yeah. BC, before Crusade. Yep. And AD, yep. after drinking. <laughs> after drinking from a big st- stone cup. Exactly. Okay, so so potentially... Essentially, he got a reset. Yeah, so his prescription after that is not necessarily the same as the one before. No, mm. I would say it's very possible, and there's probably comics and novels that say the opposite of this, that that fixed his eyes, and then the 19 years in between, his eyes basically went back to where they were slowly. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it didn't youthify him, it basically mm. just just clean bill of health him. And it potentially, when he looked into the crystal skull, mm. that gave him LASIK. <laughs> so maybe his vision's perfect now, because he didn't use he didn't use glasses after that at all, That's did he? That's true. Not even at, his, at the wedding. He wasn't wearing Not them. even at the wedding. Mm. And it's interesting that Sean Connery is dead in this movie because he also drunk from the grail. Oh, yeah. Which makes me think he got hit by, like, a bread van or something. <laughs> sure. Is all I'm saying. Mm. So, yeah, anyways, it ends with, like, it's too much power. Ah, oh, why did I absorb all this power, etc. Mm. And there's a moment where Mac just falls over and I just was thinking to myself, hey, Mac, get up. <laughs> just get up. Yeah, uh-huh. And he's like, ah, oh, this is, I think I'm all right. <laughs> he's got to stay here, I reckon. Okay, so do you think he, he heard you? No, he didn't get up. He flew oh, yeah. into the vortex. Oh, yeah. I think a stone probably killed him. Oh, yeah, that's actually probably true. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways, Mason, it's time for Indiana Jones and the Trivia of the Crystal Trivia. I love that. The trivia segment of the show where we go, wow, new trivia. Pretty good. Not necessarily new, (laughs) but but it is trivia. Mm. 
So when Indiana Jones is referring to being kidnapped, he's referring to the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones, the episode Spring Break Adventure. Whoa. So those are all canon. Interesting. Except for the old Indiana Jones eye patch stuff, which George Lucas put in and everybody complained within the studio because they don't line up with the stories properly. Oh, so they end up taking those mm. out. But the He's rest- got perfect vision <laughs> after the crystal skull laser thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why would he need an eye patch? Yeah. Harrison Ford was apparently adamant that he got to wield Indiana Jones's famous whip. Paramount executives wanted the weapon to be computer generated because of new movie safety rules. But Ford branded this rule ridiculous. You'd never get away with making this movie now, though. I tell you that much, Mason. That's right. Not with today's culture. You'd never make Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's right. You couldn't have a whip. You'd have to have um an equality whip. You'd have to have an equality whip. <laughs> You'd have to whip every single person equally. That's good. That's good, I think. Yes, <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Sean Connery turned down a cameo because he was enjoying retirement too much and Alex G fucked him up. But John Reese davies was also approached to cameo at the wedding at the end <laughs> but thought it would cheapen the character. So decided... Not to. Probably a good call, honestly. These were some of the titles that were considered for the movie. This one's from George Lucas. Indiana Jones and the Saucer Men. Steven Spielberg's <laughs> was... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, all right. Yeah, fine. it's fine, right? Yeah. Mm. Steven Spielberg's idea was Indiana Jones and the blank blank of the Mystrians. He was going to fill in later. <laughs> I'll do it on the day. Yeah. And screenwriter David Cope wanted Indiana Jones and the son of Indiana Jones. I don't think that's real. No. That sounds made up. Speaking of son of Indiana Jones, Mason, mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is what Shia LaBeouf said about this movie. He's this movie's biggest critic. Because oh. I feel like with some distance, mm. and we've seen this with other movie franchises yeah, before, yeah, yeah. a lot can be forgiven. I you think know? with a judicious edit, a yeah. lot of this could be fixed. If instead of fighting while doing the, the splits on the top of a couple of Jeeps... He dies. He just dies straight away. <laughs> Anyway, so he said, I feel like I dropped the ball on the legacy that people loved and cherished. You get the monkey swinging and things like that, and you can blame it on the writer and you can blame it on Steven, but the actor's job is to make it come alive and make it work, and I couldn't do it. So that's my fault. Simple. Now, as a result of this, apparently this destroyed his relationship with Spielberg. Because also Spielberg obviously had a hand in the Transformers movies as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, very loosely. Yeah. Don't blame him for that. Though he did pick Michael Bay. Ah. Yeah. Harrison Ford said this of Shia LaBeouf. I think LaBeouf was a fucking idiot. Uh-oh. As an actor, I think it's my obligation to support the film without making complete ass of myself. Shire is ambitious, attentive, and talented, and he's learning how to deal with a situation which is very unique and difficult. And Steven Spielberg apparently gave Shire the following advice. Tom Cruise never picks his nose in public. And Shia LaBeouf said, And all I thought was, I don't want to be Tom Cruise. It was this gut reaction. What a tangled web of people saying weird stuff. Incredible. But I would say, look, as, as much as a lot of people don't like Shia LaBeouf for a bunch of good reasons, yeah. um, I, don't, I don't think any actor... You can't could, fix... Daniel Day-Lewis couldn't have saved <laughs> swinging through the trees with monkeys. He couldn't have done it. No, I agree. Anyways, box office for this on a budget of $185 million, making this by far the biggest Indiana Jones budget. Mm. Thus far. Thus far, yes. Uh, It made $790 million that year. It is the second highest grossing movie of the year internationally behind The Dark Knight. I see. That's not a bad outcome at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And here's the thing, Mason. People, they love these videos. They tell me. Oh, yes. And they say, can I see them early? And you say no. No, I say yes. I've been telling them no. No, you've got to tell them yes. Oh. Okay, you tell them no, I'll tell them yes. Okay, great. We'll come at them like that. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. But if you head over to bigsandwich.co, they always go up early. Lawrence, who edited this series, we very much appreciate it. Thank you, Lawrence. He gets them done. And Ben, who's coming back also, they get them done early. They go up there. And there's also bonus podcasts. There's movie commentaries. Mm-hmm. We do video game Let's Plays and we're going to be playing some Indiana Jones stuff if you want to check it out. right. Exclusively there. But who wants a hint towards next week? Me? The entire IMF has been disavowed. Nice. What are we up to? Four? four? Up to four. I know. Nice. We'll find out. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll do I a remember liking search. four a lot. Yeah, me too. Mm. Anyways, thank you so much everybody for watching. Please give a big subscribe to your favourite YouTube channel. And then us. Yeah, that's right. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. I was going to make that joke. Too I late. was going to make it. Too late. Ah, That's right. Ah. Should bloody drink from the bloody bloody cup of the bloody Christ, the cup, the thing, and then you wouldn't be so stupid. Yeah, maybe. I don't <laughs> think it does that, but I, I would. Well, you st- can hope. I would try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>